Hi, this is Thor, the moderator, and I am here in Philadelphia, and I am with Narit Shine, who is uh, the executive director of the Mazzoni Center. Good morning, or good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you. Nice to be here. Well, thanks for having us, and and uh, I'd like you to just tell us a little bit about the Mazzoni Center, and or I'm sorry, the Mazzoni Center, and what it does here in Philadelphia. Well, Mazzoni Center started in 1979, so we're about 33 years old, and it really started as a gay men's health organization, and then became an AIDS organization when in the early 80s and on to the 90s when the AIDS epidemic was at its highest. Um, so as the epidemic progressed, we kind of added uh, departments. Mm -hmm. So we started with education and then we continued with HIV testing. We progressed to case management, the food bank, housing, body services. And then in the 90s, we kind of went back to LGBT health with HIV and AIDS still the focus, but within the larger context of um, LGBT health. Uh, we have a very robust um, line of services, and we now have a medical center, which we didn't have in those days, um, and we have a very strong behavior health component with drug and alcohol uh, outpatient and uh, therapy. We have housing. We still have the food bank. We have very large case management, and we also added legal services to the array of services that we provide for the LGBT community. You're a member of the LGBT community yourself, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm just curious, you know, the work that you do here, uh, from your perspective, what impact does that have on uh, fellow members of the community being able to live with pride and authenticity here in Philadelphia? Well, I think that is the first and foremost important factor of this organization because people then have something to look for to. And I remember when I was growing up in Israel, there was nothing like that. And we dare said the word lesbian. And uh, nowadays when we have role models like this organization and like people who are out, I think it makes it that much easier for the younger generation. Um, I hope that we are a good model, role model for the young people and definitely being out is to me important because that is the way that I can be counted, that is the way that I can be visible and that is the way that I can have impact on politics mm -hmm. uh, and on my community. Um, I do have to say it's not safe sometimes for everybody to be out. Uh, we have patients who are transgender and for whom um, it is not safe. There are people who uh, work in certain places where it might not be safe. So it's not like you have to be out and you have to be out in every... I think it's very personal mm -hmm. and it's also where you are in the journey of your life. Because um, I can remember, I'm now you know, an old lady, but I can remember in it was years that it was not so comfortable to be out. Um, obviously now, when I am the kind of the professional uh, lesbian, it's, it's obviously who I am and what I do, but we do need to um, have patience and understand that it is a personal journey. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, as you think about that personal journey, you've had kind of an interesting history. Uh, I understand you uh, retired as a colonel from the Israeli army. I did. Um, I served for 20 years. Um, I served uh, both in the intelligence, in the women's corps, and I retired as the head of the education uh, corps of the Israeli army. Um, I was out. Um, and in Israel it's very different because, first of all, everybody goes into the army at the age of 18. And some of us stay for longer. <laughs> um, and once you are, everybody goes into the army, it becomes a whole different army. It's much less uh, rigid, it's much more of the people's army, and um, we unfortunately live in a country in Israel where we have our share of uh, way too many wars. Mm -hmm. So we do need everybody to serve in the army. So when the issue of homosexuality came up, 
Um, and actually, the joke is that to begin with, if you said that you were a homosexual, you wouldn't serve in the army. You were released from service. So people who didn't want to serve just started saying, well, I'm a homo, I'm a homo. And then everybody caught up to it and said, oh, well, <laughs> well, and then you, it's obviously that it's not an issue mm -hmm. uh, in the Israeli army, and people serve. So, so how was it serving as an open, openly lesbian woman in uh, the Israeli army? I mean, well, in your day-to-day -day life there, what, what impact did that have? I think in your immediate environment where everybody knows you and knows who you are, it was not an issue. Uh, when I went to other parts of the army or had to meet other people, for some people, it was like a novelty, because mm -hmm. uh, think about it, we're talking about the 80s now. Uh, so it's a little different today. So in those days, it must have been a novelty for some people or a curiosity. But I think, and that's the issue about coming out. Once you're not other, once you're not a big question mark to people, they can't ignore you. Mm -hmm. And uh, they treat you just like who you are. So. There were odd and there were uncomfortable moments, but on the whole, you know, you get used to it. But what it is, to some extent, it's coming out the rest of your life. So there's always another situation, be it in the driver's license, be it uh, writing a will, being buying a house, being going to the store. It, it's umpteen situations in which you have to make a quick decision do I come out? Do I use this as a teachable moment, or do I not? So. And and that's that's something that you still find yourself doing today. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. In your day to day life, yeah. mm -hmm. even think about it. We now have somebody working in our house rebuilding a deck. So when I came, when he came first to the house to do that, you have to say, um, me and my partner, and then you very clearly say she, uh -huh. uh, so that everybody will know what we're talking about right off the bat. Then. It's, it's a teachable moment every single moment of your life. And so you're using your pronouns not to hide, but to live with greater authenticity. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I have to say, living with greater authenticity is takes a lot of stress off you and a lot of, um, I think, mental issues and physical issues. Imagine carrying a burden some people carry it in a headache, some people carry it in a neck pain, some people carry it in a back, in a bad back. And I think being not, not being out and having to hide a major part of who you are is detrimental to your health. There's no question. That's pride counts because? Because it's real. Very good. Thank you very much for participating in the interview. It was wonderful. Thank you. I appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you. Good.